Nearly every day, Martin Hill spends some time in his warehouse located in Midland, North Carolina. It's arguably his favorite place, and it's unlike any other spot in the world. This is sort of my, my room and uh, doesn't reflect the, uh, the neatness of its owner, but it, it does have some his, history involved in it. Martin Hill collects movie cameras, old movie cameras. Many of them are famous for the films that they were used to shoot. Now this one shot the Shirley Temple films. This one is a Mitchell Vista Vision, and we have determined that that camera shot Ten Commandments. There's another one over there that we believe worked on the Gone with the Wind. Yeah, it was serial number D2, and they used every camera in existence in 1939 to shoot the burning of Atlanta. When this camera was black and not reflexed, that's number 17 BNC. It shot the Abbott and Costello comedies. After it was reflexed, it shot uh, Alfred Hitchcock's last movie. That's a 65 millimeter portable, hand holdable movie camera. And that one shot Patton, worked on the movie Patton. About the only thing that it's famous for is it shot the atomic bomb tests of, um, in 1945. This camera supposedly shot um, Star Trek, uh, the, the early the Star Trek, the, the one, original Star William Trek. Shatner version. I've always liked um, finding out stuff that the uh, cameras have done. And otherwise, it's just a bunch of mechanical filmmaking devices that uh, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Those mechanics should not be overlooked, however. Some of the cameras are famous just for being groundbreaking in their day or for being one of the only ones of their kind left in the world. That is a John Norling uh, 3D camera. This was the first movie it supposedly shot. It was a Howard Hughes film called Second Chance. That was a 3D camera. He only made one and he uh, loaned, loaned it or leased it to Arkea. This camera here is one of the famous uh, but little known about Fox cameras. It racks over in a very unusual way. Uh, that's how you rack it over to view the picture. This is the first uh, Super 1200 camera ever made. By now, there's probably not but two or three of these cameras. So an extremely rare camera. It's safe to say that this warehouse is one of the most unique tributes to movie making that exists anywhere. It's an unusual collection. It's an advanced collection. That can be said without even seeing the camera that is Martin Hill's prized possession. This is the most famous camera I've got. This is Charlie Chaplin's personal camera. The first one he purchased in his name, the only one he purchased in his private name. In its day, probably the finest movie camera in the world. The irony of it is I have to keep it locked in a safe, and I never get to see it except when people like you come want to do a thing. We got it out just for you. Martin Hill has long been interested in filmmaking. Somewhere along the way, he got started buying old equipment. It came primarily from the movie studios or camera companies as technology improved and these cameras were no longer needed. Martin would sell some of the gear and rent other pieces. It was pretty hot property for a while. Now? It's like uh, an advanced hobby that used to be a really uh, good business. There's very little buying and selling these days. Martin is not interested at all in more modern cameras. To shoot digital, all you've got to do is point and hit a button and listen through the phones, and it's much easier. You, you couldn't do that with cameras like this. It took a crew to serve a piece of equipment like that. Now the collection exists primarily for Martin's enjoyment. He's more than happy to give people a tour if they have the desire, but most days it's just Martin and his cameras. I'm just an old man living in the past, you know, enjoying talking about my love of, uh, of equipment. It has been a decades-long love affair, and it shows no sign of ending. The cameras have a home, and Martin Hill has his very personal connection to the early days of the filmmaking industry. Movie cameras have history because they're like 
sort of like books. I mean, they represent a past. They have a story to tell.